Every pump, I would stare into his eyes and as if we were in a different world together. I couldn't hear anyone's voice around me. It was just me and Clay there. No pulse, no breathing, white. And the only thing I can think of is breathe, breathe, breathe. Thirty racks, beer, liquor, music playing, people having a good time. It was way too casual of a night for our friend to die. The hardest part for us to understand is that Clay was in the prime of his life. He was a thriving 19, almost 20 year old college student. None of his friends who were with him that night had any indication that he was at all in trouble. I didn't know until the night that I went out with him that people even took Xanax. He said I should never do it, but he ended up taking it. He thought he knew what he was doing. He thought he knew where his limit was. He thought he knew best. Taking alcohol alone is one thing. Taking alcohol with another depressant raises the levels of both, and the liver can't manage it. And before you know it, you've taken too much. And that's a potentially lethal combination. Prior to Clay's death, I didn't know anything about mixing prescription drugs and alcohol. No one really saw it coming, and I think that's why it's important that it could really happen to any kid. I will never forget it or underestimate that risk. We've got to change the culture, but it's like moving a battleship. You can't turn it on a dime. You've got to swing it around so slowly, but you've got to keep at it, and you can turn the ship around. He loved all of us, and he loved his family so much. He wasn't trying to put any of them at risk, and that's the saddest part. I don't think I'll ever have someone like Clay Soper ever again. <laughs> I want Clay to be remembered forever, and I want his spirit to live on.